Hey, this is this is Fanta. Sorry, I had to wait for her to finish. Anyways, uh, this in this video, I'm going to make a um, beginner's. I guess, I guess I would say like a progression guide. Um, it's kind of like my. <laughs> you could say it's kind of like my thing when I when I play when I play um, games like these. It's trying to get through the game as humanly fast as possible. You know, trying to progress as as much as possible and just catch up as much as possible. Now, with that being said, um, you should probably, you know, play for fun, collect your favorite waifus and stuff. It is a pre pretty casual game. There's not a lot of um, competitive. I think there's a plane outside. There really is a plane outside. There's not a lot of competitive aspects to the game. Um, well, there kind of is, but it's kind of like, you know, you can you can do it but you can still enjoy the game without doing it. You know, there's no like, there's no benefit to, there's no really huge incentive to like, you know, be rank one and stuff in PVP. Um, besides, it gives you like more gems daily, but you'll still be fine without those bonus gems. Like, you know, all the other players can, um, are able to make it by without those gems, still collect their favorite waifus and stuff like that. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. Like you don't have to be like, <laughs> You know, super, super, super try hard um, to to enjoy the game. But with that being said, you know, I I would I've talked to some people that you know also play the game, and I think out of a lot of people that I've talked to, a lot of people they know, like I'm probably one of the the fastest people to like just blast through early game and just get through late get to what I would consider late game, um, which is like you know you cleared all the story maps, you cleared everything. Um, you're like, you know, constantly top 10 in arena and stuff like that. Um, and I've only been playing for around, around two months or so. So, um, I'm, I'm going to give my kind of my progression guide on what you should really do early on to kind of get through early game. If you want to cash up as humanly fast as possible. All right. So, uh, the first thing you want to look at is is which character to raise. Now the first the first thing before you start playing the game, um, what I actually did was I had, this is my second, actually this is my third account that I played. Um, the first account that I played, I just basically played to kind of see what the game was like. And then the second account, I did a few rerolls and then started playing. And then I realized the characters that I got weren't really that good. I got to around like level, level 20 30 something and i realized the characters i got wasn't that good i asked around and then i asked basically you know what is the most ideal characters to re-roll for to progress as fast as possible in the early game and i i found some answers and basically um i this is my third account and i did a re-roll and i specifically got um, makoto which is this character over here and and jun which is this one and basically, if you're progressing through the game, um, if you watch like my tier list video, I would consider them kind of like near the pretty much top tier in, in terms of non-limited characters in the game. Um, this game has limited characters and non-limited characters. Limited characters means you can only get them during the time that their banners are up through, through Gacha. You have to roll for them at the time of their, their banner. So it comes seasonally and you have to roll at that time in order to get that limited character. Um, but basically these two, Jun and Makoto, they're basically, I would consider them the highest tier in terms of progression for non-limited characters in the game. So if you want to um, progress as humanly fast as possible, I would consider getting getting these two. Um, I, would, I would actually say the third character that I would um, consider re-rolling for the most is actually Tomo. She is probably, in terms of like physical AOE DPS, like consistent physical AOE DPS, she, she does the best job. Like she specializes in doing um, physical AOE damage because her, 
her skill is that um, her second skill if you look at her skill rotation she basically would attack use her second skill attack use her second skill and then attack and use her third skill i think that's the that's the basic skill rotation and compared to a lot of other characters like they they don't use their special abilities um until like every five attacks or so in in their rotation so her rotation basically um makes it so she keeps spamming her second skill which is an aoe skill that does more damage the more enemies that it hits it does more damage the more enemies that it hits and um kind of th some things that you'll actually struggle with when you get through the mid game is you want to um, anything that requires you to do aoe damage um, if you're most other characters can't do like there's not a lot of characters that can do consistent aoe damage like some of them can do like a single really hard aoe nuke like mimi um, but there's not that many characters in the game that can do like you know really consistent aoe damage basically tomo or um, muimi which i don't have and she's a she's a limited character as well um, she's tomo's not not a limited character but she is a she's a three star um, after i got her and raised her she helped me quite a lot in progression she also helped me with a lot of events and you know besides doing really good aoe damage she does very decent like single target damage as well like her single tar target damage output is still very very good um in in terms of just you know if you compare her with a lot of physical dps out there so so basically having her will solve like a lot of the problems where in stages you might need aoe dps where um, you know most people wouldn't have that um, she basically solves that problem so having her if you re-roll for her in the beginning it's a it's a pretty good idea um, anyone else is not really necessary like there are a few really good units like if you look at the you know my, my um, progression tier list or whatever i'll actually include the link in the description also include the link to the video of the progression tier list in this one so you can go and take a look. Um, that's basically something I made by myself. And it's a tier list only based on progression. Like it's not based on late game PVP or anything like that. It's only in terms of how to get through story um, as humanly fast as possible, basically. So um, besides these three, you really don't need, you really don't need much else. Um, anything else can be replaced with, with farmable characters. And, you know, there are some characters that do good DPS. Uh, basically, if you just take a look at the tier list and ask around, you'll know you'll know which characters are, are good and which aren't um, considered all that good. And what you want to do is you want to put all your resources into raising the characters that, to get through story mode as fast as possible. So if you want to... Um, if you want to progress like super, super fast, what you want to do... Like you want to... The reason why you want to progress really fast... Um, the main reason why you even want to do it in the first place is that all these other stages, like uh, exploration, dungeons, the, the place to get like hearts, and uh, PvP, like arena, they don't unlock until you get to a higher level. Or actually, not, not a higher level, but progress through the map high, far enough. So, for example, um, if I... If we take a look at some of the earlier stages. Uh, we'll go... Why should we start with one? Okay. So, as you're going through the map, like going through each map, um, you'll notice that some, some maps have like other things on the side over here. And this actually over here is the first dungeon. Um, I can't click it because I already did the dungeon for today. But this is the first dungeon that you can clear. And you're, you're not able to access this until you clear the second map. And if you go even further, then you'll see other, other things as well. Um, if you go map 5, like this is the second dungeon. And then... Uh, this this one's the third dungeon, you know. And the fourth dungeon's on the on the fourth map. These are the only ones that are like actually shown on the map. But if you take a look at like a brand new account over here, you'll find that like all the arenas and exploration, like all the stages, 
of, of exploration, they're actually locked until you clear a certain stage on the map. And kind of the, the place that you want to get to, kind of like, um, I would consider, you know, kind of like the final, final destination of where you want to get to is to clear map 14. Because map 14 is where you are able to access the last dungeon, extreme mode um, 2. And in order to get as much um, resources here as, as possible. And after you clear map 14, you would you would have basically unlocked everything else. You would have unlocked all the stages of um, of these of the exploration. You would have ex unlocked the the place to get these um, princess hearts. You would have unlocked arena and everything else. So you want to get to map 14 and clear it as as fast as you possibly can. And the reason for this is because you can only do these once a day. Right, you only get five runs of, of this a day. You only get um, you only get you know if you at max if you if you have the packs it's like six six runs. Without it, it's like two runs. Um, and you want to you only get like a limited amount of runs each day. So you want to use your runs at the highest level possible. Because if you're if if I run this stage, I'll be able to get like these XP potions that give me um, seven. You know, 7.5k, 8, 7, 7,500 <laughs> XP. But if I farm, like, you know, the first stage, I'm only able to get these potions that give me 300 XP. Right, so it's like, it's basically like a huge night and day difference in terms of where you are progressed in the game. So each day, as, as you're more progressed, you get more resources over time. And then where you really cap out is after you clear map 14. So in the beginning, what you want to do is you want to invest whatever resources possible to clear map 14. That's that's basically it. You want to get there as humanly fast as possible, and once you're there, you can take it easy. Um, that's like that's kind of kind of what I would what I would um, say is the most efficient way to to accumulate the maximum amount of resources. Um, besides that. There is also another really good reason to, um, you know, as you're clearing through the map, you'll you'll level up, you'll get more levels, and um, there's a few benefits to being higher level. Um, one of them is your you know your characters are stronger once you once they're leveled up, because they your characters can only be as high as your player level, so they can't be be any higher than that. Um, the other thing is like in events, you're able to. Um, you're able to roll for like certain boxes that give you like these these rewards and like armor and stuff like that um you can they can only basically they can drop gear but the gear will actually scale with your level so um as your higher level the stuff that you get you know you're spending the same amount of energy fighting the same bosses getting these same like um i think they're like tokens or something to like roll for for, for gear um, as your higher level you just get better gear so you're spending the same amount of resources but if you're higher level you get better stuff so that's that's one of the benefits to like being more progressive as well um, and, and being higher level in general now what should you um, spend your resources on early early game like you know if I if you had any choice if you're just grinding um, trying to level your your player level, trying to make your team as as strong as possible to clear through story mode. Uh, my recommendation is if you look over here, um, if you if you take a look at the this is like the battle screen, you'll see that there's there's events on on here right now, um, and events happen. I think there's like always one or two events every month, and they're always the same type of events. Um, this one's Luna Tower. It comes every every month, but it's not really an event. It's just kind of like a thing, a seasonal thing in the game. Um, I don't know why they put it here instead of like maybe they just ran out of room. But it's like this. It, it happens it um, every single month. But events basically are almost the same format. There's a normal mode that you can clear through, and then there's a hard mode, and then there's three difficulties of bosses: um, normal, hard, and very hard. Um, and very hard you can only do the boss once a day after you and you have to have these um, tickets in order to fight the boss and you get these tickets from clearing the normal or hard mode stages 
So you get these tickets, you use the tickets to fight the boss, and the boss will drop these um, medallions, which you can use to go over here and roll for, for gear and, you know, all these rewards, which are really, really good. So, um, basically, since events give you gear anyways, um, early on you don't really need that much gear. You, you can basically use all of your all of your stamina on whichever event is up at the time. And the reason why you want to do this is because events also give you bonus XP. All events give you um, 1.5 times XP. So if you do any of the normal or hard stages, you basically get 50% more XP than if you're just doing normal story mode, if you're just spending your stamina on normal story mode. So, um, and out of all, out of the 15 stages, each each normal mode will, uh, each time the event comes up, the normal mode will always have 15 stages. And you'll notice that the energy consumption for each stage, um, every five stages is different. So from one to one to five, um, the energy, energy or the stamina that it costs will cost eight. And if you do a run, it will give you 12 XP. Um, and then from six to 10, it will cost nine. And if you do a run, it will give you 14 XP. And from 11 to 15, it will um, it will cost you 10 XP. And it will give you or not, it, will, it will cost you 10 stamina, and it will give you 15 XP. So if you're if you're any good at math, you'll realize very very quickly that um, from a, if from a stamina to XP ratio efficiency, like if you're considering the efficiency of stamina to XP. You'll know that you know nine stamina convert converted into fourteen XP is the highest efficiency. Meaning, if you want to level as humanly fast as possible, then you should be farming the event stages um, one 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 six to one ten, basically. And they always drop around the same thing, so it doesn't really matter which stage you farm. I like to farm one nine. It's just like a I don't know. It just it just feels more comfortable like always always whenever i'm trying to farm xp i always farm one nine uh, but it's just like a personal thing it doesn't really matter which stage from one six to one ten that you farm any of these five stages will give you the highest um, xp efficiency and you want to like early game you want to dump just everything here you, you just want to whichever event is up at the time you just want to dump everything into like just just dump it into one nine and just just Actually, I can't use it all right now. I'm trying not to level. Um, there's a there's a reason for that, but it's 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 a little bit more advanced. It's 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 not going to be part of this video. Um, but there's basically you just want to level as quickly as possible early on, so your team becomes stronger naturally. Because when they're when your characters level up, they get bonus stats, right? They they get a bit more stats, and their skills. Um, become higher rank, meaning they do more damage. Um, the skills have better effects. You know, heals heal more. Um, shields block more damage. You know, armor debuffs give more debuffing. <laughs> like it's just, uh, it just makes your character stronger overall to increase their their level, which is why it's really really important early on. And it's very easy to level up early, so you you can, you know, you can just level your characters. Um, raise their n levels naturally get some gear to rank them up because you'll get gear You'll get random gear from the boxes and early on you don't need a lot of gear to uh, a lot of specific gear to level your characters So you'll almost guarantee be able to get the stuff that you need at, at least up until um, Around ranks rank five or six or so um, you'll, you'll almost be able to guarantee that you'll get the stuff needed to rank up your characters. So basically, if an event is up during the time that you start playing, you should just dump everything into the um, like the 1-9 stage of the event in order to level as fast as possible and get gear. Um, with that being said, you also want to progress as far in the map as possible. So what you would do is you would just use your, use your stamina to um, do each stage and get as far as you can. And then whenever you're stuck, you go back to the event, level your characters up, rank them up and then you come back to normal mode and you want to progress as far as you can um for hard mode you don't need to you don't really need to um worry too much about hard mode unless the hard mode event is up you can start farming and collecting the fragments of certain characters on hard mode um before before you actually need them because 
Hard mode, you only get a few... You only get three runs a day of a stage. As you can see over here, you only get three runs a day of a stage. So for very, very key characters, you want to be constantly collecting their their fragments in order to, to rank them up to, you know, four stars or five stars. And one of the characters I would really recommend you start collecting fragments for once you can is Eriko. Um, one of the, I would say my regrets um, after progressing to late game is that I did not start collecting her pieces early on. I, I would have, every single day before I did anything, I would have went in, on, into her stage and just, you know, did whatever I can to collect her, her, her fragments early on in order to, to level her up. And she has like multiple stages as you as you progress through. Um, but for very key characters, you want to collect their fragments early so you can start using them later on without, without worry. Like once you really do need her, you would have her ready instead of, well, I need her now, but I can't use her because she's only three stars and, you know, she's only two stars, you know, she's currently unusable. And then I have to like be farming this every single day and waiting for like another month before I can use her. So it's, it's not a, it's not a good idea. You want to start preparing um, and collecting, collecting pieces early on. And my recommend, my number one recommendation is to um, start saving up Eriko, her pieces, because it will make your life very, very easy once you need her. Um, around map 18 or 19 or so, um, some of the bosses become really, really annoying. And she does like really, really high damage. So um, she basically will be very, very needed to, to take down certain bosses if you don't have a better, um, a better physical DPS character that, that you can use. The other thing is... Um, is where to what what should you spend your dungeon coins on or whatever pvb coins and whatever which what you should spend them on so for for dungeon coins um dungeon is the these coins are the easiest to get in the game so every character that you see over here basically i would say these are like the most free to play friendly characters in the game they're the easy easiest most farmable characters that you can get in the game the ones that you see over here. And a really good character to invest in early on is Nozomi. Um, she is a very, very versatile tank. You can use her to tank all types of damage. And she can also she also has heals. She has um, physical attack buffs for the enti entire team. So she has a lot of utility. She also has stuns. So she, she has like all types of utility and she's a very balanced tank. And because you can get her pieces early on, you can you can rank her up. Um, she has really nice stats as well with her like unique equip and everything. Like she's just a very well designed, well balanced character. Um, you can use her to tank like ninety nine percent of the map. <laughs> like you, you really don't need anything else if you have a strong Nozomi. Um, the reason why I didn't raise Nozomi is because I re rolled for Jun early on. But if you don't if you if you don't have Jun, um, Nozomi is like a great, a really really great option. You can just use her and um, she's also pretty decent in pvp as well you can use her in pvp um, you can use her for, for progression so she's she's a very very good investment um, it, for your dungeon coins i would i would strongly strongly recommend you um, get her fragments and get her early on you can you can unlock her once you have 145 fragments so it will take you a little bit of time but um, you can actually refresh the shop every day and just keep buying her fragments. So whenever you have points, you just buy her fragments, refresh the shop, buy some more, and then just keep going. And then um, after you unlock her, my recommendation would be to um, get Yukari to to two stars. Get her to two stars and get her her unique equip. Um, her unique equip is, is, is this weapon over here. And basically what it does is it basically... It, pretty much triples her healing like it used to heal a lot less but once she gets her unique equip her first skill which is like a single target heal heals heals a lot like it heals heals and it also gives um magic defense and it puts a heal over time on the target as well so it just increases the healing boosts magical defense which it didn't do before and it puts a heal over time as well so it's it's real her unique equip is like probably 
the first one I would get on any character if you're serious about pro progressing. Um, because just having this this really it like this single target heal like or, around mid game or so will basically heal anyone to full HP. So just having this is 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 pretty pretty big. Um, at one stars her stats are a bit too too low, but if you can get her to two stars, which only costs thirty fragments, she starts off at one star. But you can get thirty fragments, get her to two stars, and then get fifty more fragments for her unique equip. Um, put that on, and then she's basically fine at two stars. You'll eventually want to raise her to three stars, but you can actually do that after you um, raise your Nozomi to five stars. So uh, you can, if you don't have Nozomi, you can unlock her first, and then come and get Yukari's pieces, um, get her to two stars, get her unique equip, and then go back to Nozomi, and then get Nozomi all the way to five stars. And you can just keep ranking her up. You can you can also get her her unique equip and get her to um, get her to like get her unique equipped to max level and everything like you can completely max her out because she's she's still very very useful late game like she can be used to tank all types of stuff and having a reliable tank will just save you a lot of trouble and it'll make you a lot stronger in pvp as well because you know people that don't have like you know people are using three star tanks and you're using like a five star nozomi you can just you can just pummel them so it's 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 a huge huge benefit um for your for your arena coin, for your 1v1 arena, my recommendation would be to get Monica. Um, I'm still getting Monica. My Monica is almost five stars. In in two more days, I'll be able to get her to five stars. And I'm still collecting her pieces even right now. And I started collecting her pieces since day one of playing. So, um, and I never regretted it. She's she's super good. She has she has like speed buffs. Very very strong in PvP. Um, I use her on my PvP defense as well. She's like. She's one of my key characters that I use in, in, in PvP. And I use her a lot in PvE as well. To like in late game, in late game PvE, when you're like going through stages and stuff, um, or doing bosses, certain bosses, you wanna like bosses that have like other mobs in front of them, you wanna like burst down the, the mobs as, as fast as possible. Um, Monica helps a lot with that. So she's like one of the one of my most used characters ever in the game so very very highly recommended that you invest and get her her fragments and, and everything i never pulled her um i got i got her through 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 sparking i got 145 pieces i sparked her and then i i still continue to get all her fragments every single day until until today you know even even up to today um and then i will keep getting her i'll, I'll max out her unique equip and everything and she's just gonna be a huge, huge asset for me. Um, for for uh, 3v3 or Princess Arena PvP coins, um, I would recommend you invest in Pudding. Pudding is the strongest physical defense tank in the game. Um, a bit later, I'll actually have 150 pieces and my Pudding will finally be five stars. So. It, it's it's been a long journey but I, I actually have her will have her at five stars very very soon um pudding is the strongest physical tank in the game like she tanks physical damage like it's nothing like she's, she's got highest evasion highest physical defense um she can go invincible and all that so she's basically like the tankiest tank in the game um but besides that she doesn't have a lot of utility so she's just like for pure tanking if you have a boss that does like just insane amounts of damage, um, Pudding can tank that. And she's also very strong in PvP because of just, you know, how annoying and how tanky she is. Um, sometimes on defense, you know, when, when they're fighting Pudding, um, she can just survive all the way up to the end until the timer runs out and then just, you know, win you the fight on defense. So Pudding's a very, very good investment um, for, for, for this. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for for this part. Uh, there there was one thing I, I wanted to mention before, but um, I can't seem to. Oh oh yeah oh yes. Um, I want to emphasize the point of how important rerolling is in this game. Like if you're if you want to like progress fast early, um, because I played on three accounts right. So the first account that I played on was just like super god awful. I didn't reroll. I had like two three stars and they weren't very good 
Uh, they weren't very good units to use for, for progression. And I was just like, I could barely beat normal mode, beat the normal story. I, I was struggling super, super hard. Um, my second account, I re-rolled and I was able to get a bunch of three stars. So I was able to get like a full team of three stars. And, but they weren't like, a, they weren't really good characters for <laughs> progression either. Um, but because they were three stars, it was slightly, they had higher stats, like base stats and the one stars because they, they were already three stars. Um, that I was able to progress a little bit further, a little bit faster. And then on my third account, I re-rolled until I got Makoto and Jun. And it, I just blew past like early game super fast. I just, in one day, I was able to beat the um, beat the first dungeon. And then on the second day of playing, I was able to beat the, like I was able to beat the normal mode dungeon on day one. And I beat the second dungeon on day two. Like because of, because of, like the the strength of how how strong they are um if you in terms of like progression and stuff so it's a very very big thing in this game like re-rolling is a very big thing um having the right characters early, early on you don't need to have like the perfect characters but i would say like if you can get like makoto jun tomo you basically can beat 90% of everything like I would say 90% of everything and then everything else you can just kind of slowly farm up like if you need Monica you can you can get her through the through PvP so it's like no no rush um, same thing with Nozomi as well and um, besides that what you want to also do is also raise healers um, there's there's actually a very very they're they're very very important in progressing through the game um, once you once you won't notice this early on, but once you clear the second dungeon, and you're trying to clear the extr clear the um, the very hard dungeon, you you would start needing healers. Like early on, I basically I just had like a whole bunch. I just ran ran a whole bunch of attackers, no heals, and it was just completely fine. Um, but then eventually, I started needing heals, and basically, I think around map um, like map eight all the way onwards to around like map map 17 or so i ran like two healer three healers and jun and makoto like that's all i ran and i was able to just get through everything so um healers they actually do like decent damage with their with their basic attacks so you can use them as like kind of use them as magical dps and then they'll just keep your team alive um to to do damage and I basically, I just ran three healers and I was able to, to get through most of everything. Um, the healers you want to use are, are um, Misato, she's, she's a two star, very easy to get. And um, Yui, who you get early on, you get just from playing the game. She's like completely free, one of the starter characters, um, but also a very good healer. And then Yukari, who is like a single target healer with her, with her skill. So what you, what you want to kind of run is just, you want to run one single target heal, and then you want to run like one team heal. Um, something with like, where their active skill is actually like a team heal. So you want to run a single target heal, a team heal, and then you want to run a tank, um, and basically two DPS. Preferably one of them a debuffer, and then one of them an actual DPS. So like, Makoto, um, she's very strong because she has like a has very strong physical debuffs. Uh, or actually, it's over here. She can reduce the physical defense of the enemy with two skills. So she she's basically a debuffer plus DPS, and then you want like a pure DPS that just straight out does damage. So that's that's basically just tank, um, debuffer, DPS, and then like a real DPS one team heal and then one um, single target heal and you can get through like 90 percent of the game and the reason why i like I, I raised both these healers is i like to swap them because uh, misato she has a a magic um defense buff she increases the allies magic defense by by 54. so i run her when the enemy has mostly magical attack and i run yui when the enemy has mostly physical attack because she, because Yui has a um, physical defense buff. It's not a lot, it's only 20, 28, 
but if you get her um, unique equip, it's also very good for, for bosses. She can put a physical attack debuff on the enemy. She can decrease the enemy's physical um, physical attack by 885, so it's quite a lot. I use her when the enemy is mostly does mostly physical damage. And I just kind of swap the two healers. Um, I run I run Yukari when when um, she's mostly she mitigates mostly magical damage because she has a magic defense buff. But you can just use her as a single target healer early on. And I basically, I, I would use Yukari sometimes, and then I would run Maho sometimes. And Maho, you can get her from, from the um, dungeon coins. So she has a physical defense buff by 47, so it's, it's quite a lot. And she also has a single target heal, and she increases physical um, defense. So basically, I would run her as, as my single target healer um, when, they're when they're mostly physical, physical damage. I would run her alongside Yui, and then I would run Yukari and um, and Misato when um, when it's mostly magical. And I would just swap these two, and then early on, if you don't have her, you can just run Yukari for both physical and, and magical. And then eventually, after you raise your um, Nozomi to like five stars and stuff, you can start collecting her pieces and getting getting you know 145 pieces to to spark her and start using her. Well, that's pretty much it. Like if you just run the four these four healers, if you just raise these four healers, and then a tank, one phys one damage debuffer, and then like one pure damage character, you you can get through like you can get through all the game. You can get through the entire game, <laughs> pretty much with uh, with stuff like that. Um, eventually, you might need some like some one or two units to clear like very specific stages but i would say like 99 percent of the stages you can clear just using like that type of very standard team um but yeah that's 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 pretty much it that is that is it for progression you want to do that and clear map 14 after you clear map 14 your your life will be easy you'll unlock everything you'll be able to get the maximum amount of resources um every single day and the last thing I also want to point out is when you're doing the dungeons, you want to do the hardest difficulty that you can, even if you can't clear it. Because you'll notice as you as you go through the dungeons, um, the next one always gives more dungeon coins than the previous one. Like, even if you can't beat the boss, um, like, each stage of the dungeon gives a lot. I, I think I remember on extreme mode, like, each stage only gives, like, um, each stage gave, like, I think it was, like, 600 to 800 dungeon coins and then when i went to extreme 2 each stage gave like um like like 1200 dungeon coins so it it increases quite a lot when you go go to the next stage so even if you can't complete it you want to do the hardest um difficulty that you can but that is that is it that's pretty much it Anyways, um, and thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care.